everybody and welcome back to Flop Talk. Today we are going to be doing another episode of Wiki Reviews and we are going to be going over their little tutorial on how to potty train a parrot. So to preface this, yes it is absolutely possible to potty train parrots, however there are some very particular things that you have to take into account in order to actually potty train them, which I will be outlining as we review their article today. There are some misconceptions about whether or not you can actually potty train a parrot based off of the idea that they cannot fully control their cloaca and whether or not they actually are going to poop. Now, just because they do not have the same amount of control that people have when it comes to their bowel movements, it doesn't mean that they can't tell when they need to go and where they need to be when they need to go. So you absolutely can potty train a parrot, but there are some very particular things that you do have to take into account so you do it safely, which I will be outlining as we go through their article today. Parrots, especially bigger ones like macaws and cockatoos, tend to go to the bathroom quite often. With some work, you can successfully toilet train your parrot, choose a command, and set up a bathroom area. Reinforce good behaviors with treats and praise, never punish or scold your parrot, it will only stress it out. That is pretty accurate, you don't want to be punishing them for pooping, it's not really something they have control over. Obviously positive reinforcement is what we aim for. Um, it's kind of weird that they emphasize that macaws and cockatoos poop quite frequently. Smaller birds poop more frequently than bigger birds, so parrotlets and budgies and little guys like that will usually poop around every 15 minutes, whereas bigger birds can hold it for significantly longer. Establishing your command. Observe your bird's natural behavior. In order to potty train your bird, you will need to pay attention to how it behaves right before it goes to the bathroom. Perfect, that's the best way to start setting this up. You should also take note of how often it uses the bathroom. This way you will know when to and how often to carry your bird over to the bathroom area. Perfect, exactly what you need to be doing to get this started. Most parrots will squat down slightly and flick their tails up. Perfect. Watch your bird to see the precise movements. Exactly. Also keep track of how often your bird defecates. Parrots defecate as often as every 15 minutes. Off to a good start so far. This way you will know roughly how often you'll need to direct your bird to the bathroom area. Perfect. So that's exactly how you want to start off these sessions. You want to preemptively get your bird to where you want them to poop. So you have something to reinforce them for rather than just kind of standing there for 20 minutes on end and kind of having them poop in the wrong spot all the time, looking at their body language, setting a timer, making sure you know when they're going to poop, sets you up on the right path for success here. Choose a command. You want a command to reinforce the behavior. You want to be able to say something when you see your bird squatting that will alert it that it needs to go to the bathroom area. Pick something simple like go potty and teach your bird where to use the bathroom. So this I have an issue with. And the reason for this is that birds can be extremely highly motivated especially for food. Using a command can cause a lot of problems and this is the biggest flaw with most potty training advice. If you ask your bird to go to the bathroom or go potty as they're telling you to do here and they don't need to go, your bird may actually force it in an attempt to earn the reward that you're going to give them and that can cause issues through prolapses. Additionally, a bird may be so reinforced to do the behavior that they're going to not do it until you ask them to. That can cause issues where they're going to get compacted, they're going to hold it for longer than they need to, they can get sick very, very easily. This is a common thing that you would do if you wanted to stop a bird to attention scream. It's a very common method that a lot of trainers will use where they'll put the thing they don't want on cue, screaming, and then never ask for it. So the bird won't do the behavior until you've asked for it, so the bird isn't going to attention scream. The same issue is going to happen here if you put pooping on command and then don't ask for it. It's possible that your bird is going to sit there and hold it in and actually hurt themselves. So an alternative to that would be just to move them to the area and wait. As soon as they poop, give them lots of praise, give them rewards, tell them they've done a good job. They don't need the command to understand what's going on here. If every time they feel the need to poop, they get moved to a certain area and they poop, they're going to start associating the feeling of needing to poop with going to this area and getting a reward. So instead of you needing to cue them, their body telling them that they need to poop will be the cue for the behavior. It's not going to cause any problems. The bird already feels they need to poop. They're going when they instinctually need to. You're not forcing them. They're not excessively holding it. Step number three, create a potty spot. You should have an area in your parrot's cage where it can go to the bathroom. Most people use something like a waste basket or lay down paper towels newspaper in a certain portion of their home. You can also use paper plates. That's pretty smart. I've never considered using a paper plate before. Make sure to pick a space the bird can easily access on, it, on its own. So perfect. You want to have one very consistent area that the bird can access at all points in time. If you're going to heavily potty train your bird, you need to make sure that this area is something they can access when they're alone as well as when they're out with you or have multiple spots. 
Having multiple spots can be trickier to train though, and you need them to generalize that behavior and that can take a lot more time. So most people will just choose the bird's cage because usually the bird's cage is in a pretty accessible part of the home when they're out and about anyways, they can easily fly to the cage and poop and you're not having a second area to clean. And then when the bird is away and you put them in their cage for the night or whatever, they can easily access that spot because they're sleeping. So usually the cage is the spot that most people will pick. Um, if you're gonna pick something like a perch or a stand that you keep out in your living room, make sure to move that into their room or into their area when you do close them up for the night. So that way they can still poop because some birds will get so intent on doing that behavior that they will hold it until they have access to that spot again. Why is this macaw like the size of a green cheek conure? Move your bird to go potty when he needs to go, watch your bird when it's out of the cage. Remember that natural behaviors you notice indicate that the bird needs to use the bathroom. You need to see the bird doing these things, it indicates it needs to go, like squatting or flicking its tail. Immediately move the bird to the bathroom area. And first you will need to use a step up command to get your bird to climb up into the arm or finger and then take your bird to the spot and hold it over until it goes to the bathroom. So yes, that's pretty much generally okay, except I wouldn't hold them over the area because then the bird is relying on you to be there in order to go to the bathroom. Instead, I would get them to move onto a perch. You can either station them there or you can get them to step up and then place them down. Just having the bird end up somewhere it can get to without your help. So if they need to go to the bathroom and you aren't there, the bird can access it without you. Say your command when the bird defecates. As I've said, you don't need a command and you generally don't want to use one in this circumstance. Watch your bird closely when it defecates. Say your command. Don't do that. This will help your bird make the connection. It will realize it's supposed to go to the bathroom in the bathroom area. So as I said, they don't need your word to make that connection. They'll start to connect that when they feel the need to go to the bathroom, they get moved to their potty spot, they potty, they get a reward. The act of feeling the need to poop will be the command for them. They don't need you to tell them to do it, and that will be much more beneficial for them in the long run. It might take a little bit longer to train that way, but it is safer and healthier to teach it that way instead. Some people use commands like hurry up if the bird is taking a while to relieve itself. For example, if your bird has been standing on the potty area for a while, you can say something like hurry up, and reward your bird as soon as it goes to the bathroom. I would not do this. Under any circumstances, I would not do this. If your bird is sitting on its spot and it's not going to the bathroom, there's probably a reason for that, and it's either they're scared and stressed out, or they don't need to go. And telling them to hurry up and putting them in a situation where they have to go to your command can cause a lot of issues. You're gonna cause a prolapse, your bird's gonna get sick, they're gonna need surgery. If the bird doesn't need to go, the bird doesn't need to go. Honestly, if your bird doesn't need to go, what are you in a rush for? Why are you in such a hurry for your bird to poop? Odds are you're going about your everyday life and you can just chill on the couch beside them for 10 minutes until they do need to poop. There's no need to rush them in this situation. It's just gonna be dangerous for them. Reward the behavior. Every time the bird goes to the bathroom spot, give it a reward. Parrots respond best to positive reinforcement. All animals do. Offer a treat and praise when the bird successfully goes to the bathroom in the right spot. Choose a specific treat your parrot only gets for using the bathroom so the parrot understands what it's being rewarded for. You can also reward your bird by letting it out of the cage for a few minutes each time it goes to the bathroom in the proper spot and then putting it back until it goes to the bathroom in the right spot again. Okay, so this is kind of weird. So this is probably the trickiest part about potty training is that you don't want to use primary reinforcers. Primary reinforcers are just things that the bird finds really, really valuable, stuff that they're really extremely motivated to work for. Because we're working with a very basic bodily function, you don't want your bird so extremely motivated to do it that they're not going to do the behavior, they're not going to poop until you've told them to or until that spot's available. You want this to be a mediocre motivator so that way, yes, they will be motivated to do it, but not so much so that they're going to hold it in and hurt themselves because the spot isn't available at that point in time. So instead of using food or only giving them access to outside the cage for pooping in the right spot, both of those things can be really valuable and tell the bird that they're not going to have this unless they do the right thing. Instead, you want to use a secondary or tertiary reinforcer. You want to use something that the bird enjoys and wants to work for, but isn't so excited about it that they're going to put their entire soul and heart into figuring this out. You want the bird to 
go to do it, but not be super butthurt about it if they do it wrong. So instead of using food and out of cage time, things that can be super, super beneficial and rewarding to your bird, I would just use your voice. I would use scritches. I would use interactivity. Have the bird poop in the right spot, get really excited and happy with them, give them some love, give them some affection. I wouldn't make their capacity to come out of the cage completely dependent on whether or not they poop in there. That is a little bit bizarre and just kind of a little bit cruel. Why are you limiting your bird's capacity to come out and spend time with you just because you want them to poop? Um, it's not necessary. So I would just be very careful about what reinforcers you're using in this situation. Yes, you want that motivation to be there, but you don't want there to be so much motivation that they're gonna hurt themselves trying to only do that behavior correctly. Take your bird to the potty spot as often as necessary. Yes, you wanna be taking them there as frequent as possible. If you're putting them in the spot and they're not pooping and you've left them there for five, 10 minutes and they still don't wanna go, just take them off, wait for those body language cues. The more times you can capture the correct behavior and get there on time as many times as possible, the faster they're gonna pick up on it. The more times you miss and they poop in the wrong spot or they poop somewhere else, the more you're gonna run into difficulty because the bird's repeating the behavior that you don't want them to be doing. So you just wanna be on point and try and keep things as focused as possible, capturing as many correct moments as you can. And that was it. So that was a much more successful review than the last one. They definitely have a couple of outdated tips but I'm not really surprised. Potty training parrots is a decently new concept, so there's a lot of kind of misinformation there on how to approach the behavior. The advice that they've given is what you will find pretty standard everywhere, and while it's not necessarily faulty, they do have some really good bases, they have some really basic understandings of how to do these things, but there's a couple of those fine-tuned details, like what reinforces you use and whether or not to use a cue that can cause major problems. So when it comes to these things, Having those tiny little things changed will be a lot more beneficial for your bird in the long run. Overall, the advice wasn't atrocious. There's definitely some things that they should improve and change there. There are some tiny details to fix, but in comparison to the last review we did, this was a major improvement. No talk of dominance and weird, massively old, outdated theories like that. So definitely much more impressed with this one, but still some things they need to consider. That's gonna do it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this series because I certainly am so far. Thank you guys for being here and I will see you all next time. Bye. Whoops, Do woo, woo.